So it says two cars approach an IC. Um, so it's telling us uh, no friction. Four way. Um, <laughs> so that's the 2D part. Perpendicular intersection. Car. Okay, let me start drawing this picture here. Um, so I'm going to draw, draw my axis so that um, this is my plus axis east and my plus y is and my plus y is north. Car A travels northward at some speed VA and car B is traveling eastward at some, oh, I guess VB, at some speed of VB. And the question isn't giving us the speed of VB, but um, what they are telling us is that after the collision, they stick together. This is one of those uh, sticking collision. And this whole mass of the thing that's a stuck together version of the cars, they are traveling at 30, uh, some theta degree north of the east. Okay, so I, let me label this correctly. It's going in some direction here. And the given angle is a this angle here. Okay. Oh, and you may assume the cars have same mass. So uh, let me just use the symbol M for both of them. Okay. So it's a it's a collision, and uh, because all the um, all the bodies that are interacting are part of our system, so all the significant forces are internal forces. We can say in this collision, momentum is conserved. So we'll be using conservation of momentum. And as you're using conservation of momentum, the thing to be aware of and keep in mind is that uh, momentum is a vector quantity. And because so often we set up one dimensional situation, it's uh, easy to forget that. But when we say the, that the momentum is conserved, like the total momentum of a before picture is equal to the total momentum of the after picture, this vector symbol is serving as a reminder to tell you that this one equation is actually multiple equations, uh, two or three equations, depending on your number of dimensions. So, particular. So, in most questions, we set it up as a one-dimensional thing so that you don't have to consider the other two dimensions. But in this question, it's now set up as a two-dimensional interaction. So we have to remember that what this equation really means is the total momentum in the x direction before is equal to the total momentum in the x direction after. These different components are individually conserved. And the same deal for the y direction. Total momentum in the y direction before is equal to the total momentum in the y direction after. It's uh, easy to forget that because you don't see that often. And um, <laughs> the, with the energy, energy is a scalar. So with the energy, it's just really one equation. But with the momentum, momentum is a vector. You have to remember that these different components are independently conserved. So let me write this out. I guess um, it's... Uh, a bit unusual enough of a setup that I think it's worthwhile to just uh, uh, write things fully out and try to identify some of the unknowns that we need to label. And let me just label this a free final so that I have something to refer to. So, um, so just uh, looking at this interaction here, and so if this were a force question, there are some steps that's been pre-laid out that I can go through, our standard strategy. And even though a lot of what we'll do now will mirror what we do in standard strategy, since it's a technically involving different things, momentum, um, let me just uh, wing it, <laughs> do things as we go. But I am going to have this uh, diagram in mind so that I can remind myself of the things that we need as we go. So I'm going to write down the total X momentum before the collision. So before the collision, the car B was moving in the X direction and it was the only thing moving in the X direction. Car A was moving in the Y direction. So I'll say X before 
will be mass of b m times its uh, its speed. That will give me the total x component of momentum. That's equal to. Uh, I'll write the right hand side after. Let me just do the before picture first. So the total y momentum before. So only uh, car A is moving in the y direction. So I'll say mass of the A times its speed or velocity. Um, it's in the going in the plus y direction. So that's the total y momentum before. Nothing else is moving in the y direction. Now, after the collision, <laughs> you have this uh, one total mass, uh, mass of A plus mass of B, um, moving in some diagonal direction. So here is where I'll have to think about breaking up the momentum into x and y components. So I have this triangle, hypotenuse, right angle, triangle. So I need to break up this momentum into components. Very similarly, how we, in step number three of Newton's law strategy, we break up forces into components. So we need to do that. Let's do that. So, um, so uh, this uh, I'm given this angle theta. So this side here, that's going to be the magnitude of the final velocity times sine theta. It's the opposite side. And this component is going to be magnitude of the final velocity times cosine theta. It's the adjacent side. So, so with these labels in mind, now I can write down what is the total momentum after the collision. So I have um, total mass. That would be mass of A plus the mass of B times the x component of velocity. So if we final times cosine theta. And for the y component, uh, I have something similar. Total mass of A and B, they are moving together, times the y component of velocity. We final times the sine theta. OK. Hmm. Why do I have two equations? What, what, I'm, OK, I have two equations. Let me, before I go on further, let's just do a check. Do I have equal number of equations as unknowns? So uh, let me just go through each of these quantities. Mass, I know, or I have a sense it will cancel out. So I'll assume I know the mass. VB, oh, I don't know this. OK, I got to figure this out. That's one unknown. Mass, I know, or I think it's going to work itself out. V final. I'm not given for final, so I don't know that. Second unknown. Theta. I'm given theta, so I know that. At mass times VA. I'm given VA. Okay, good. Um, and everything here is something that I've already counted. Okay. So I have two unknowns. So I think I'm beginning to see here. Um, this equation one would be nice for solving for VB. Here's just one challenge. I don't know the final speeds. If I have, if I know final speeds, then I can just solve for VB out of this first equation. But since I don't, I need to eliminate VF as one of my unknowns. And I can do that using my second equation here. Let me solve this for VF. So using that, I can work out an expression for VF. Um, I'm just doing it in my head. <laughs> Pause it and do <laughs> what you need to do to the algebra on your end and divide by uh, 2m times sine theta times uh, 3a. M's cancel out. Okay, that's my expression for VF. And I can plug that in here, eliminate it, and solve for VB. And technically, I can. I think I have enough information to work this out numerically. Um, but you know, what? let me just demonstrate the algebra uh, because that's uh, what I usually preach. You know, you need to build up your algebra skill, and um, so <laughs> I better practice what I preach. So I'll just uh, work out the yeah, answer for VB algebraically. Just one shot, no uh, going through other numerical parameters. That also helps avoid any rounding issues uh, if there are any. So, so, um, so, 
So let me do this. I'm going to solve for VB and then just plug in for VF. Uh, normally, that may not be a good idea, especially if this uh, VF is a function of VB somehow, but it's not. So I think I can do that without any problem. So solving for VB, I have VB is equal to masses kind of cancel out. I have two times V final times cosine theta. Let me plug in V final. Then I get two times um, VA over two times the sine theta times cosine theta. And you see some simplifications here. Twos cancel out. That's nice. Um, yeah, that's really one of the upsides of working things out algebraically. Sometimes you see unexpected simplification. And I can combine sine and cosine theta using sine theta over cosine theta is equal to tangent theta. So I can say this whole thing is equal to VA divided by tangent theta. That helps me reduce how many numbers I need to plug in. So now I can plug in the numbers. I have a VA. That's uh, uh, 29 meters per second, 29 meters per second, divided by tangent theta, so 38 tangent um, is equal to 37.1 meter per second. And that's it. Uh, since I have the number, let me plug in and check. So it's um I, I hope as you're doing this question, some of it reminds you of the, the two dimensional things that you're doing in um in the standard strategy and all those skills that you developed as you are working through a force question, they continue to be useful because we continue to use vectors for a lot of stuff.